Welcome back. As you can see, Dad is working on the wiring still, feeding more wires through more conduits, but I'm going to install the bed today. The first official building work is starting. The first job of the day was to cut the ply which was on the walls of the van when I bought it. I measured each side and used the metal bed bar to draw between them before cutting it with a jigsaw. We're using these because the wheel arches are already cut out of them perfectly which saves us a job. And these fit up to where the bed goes and on the other side I had to cut a hole for the 240 hookup to come into the garage. Using a screwdriver I attached the ply to the walls. To give me extra sleeping space, I am adding a recess in the walls above where the bed is to be fitted, which is why I've split the ply like this. If you've missed my last video, this is basically my bed. These three hollowed metal struts from Ikea, I'll pop the link in the description, they extend so you can stretch them out as wide as the van. Three of those evenly spaced and then we're going to put bed slats in between and that's all it is for the bed. So those were 20 pounds each, 20 quid. And then the slats were 35, so a whole bed for 95 quid. Get yourself to Ikea. So here we have the brackets that these metal struts fit into. Now I have seen some people just fix a wooden batten to this strut and then drill the metal extendable joists directly into that. So I'm sure there's several ways of doing this but we have decided to go for these brackets, also from Ikea. So there's already a hole here perfectly, so we'll use that one. We'll put one there, one in the middle, and then one at the far side. Repeat on the opposite side, and then pull the straps in. Here's another quick rundown of what else Dad has done on the electric side of things. So this wire here, this red wire, will go to the vehicle battery. So when the engine's running, it will charge the leisure battery. So this is a 70 amp um, circuit breaker. I didn't want to put fuses in for Becca because she might not know if they've tripped, but this, if it's tripped, is very You've easy. You've already shown me. That very red easy arm, to see. yeah, that red arm comes out. Okay. So I know straight away if something's gone wrong. So this will go directly to our um, battery charger. Yeah, Unit, the black box. The black box, yep. the NDS battery charger. Yep. We need to find another wire. I'm hoping one of these actually that we've got here will come live when we turn the ignition on. Yeah. So it, it knows when the van's running and then it will use the van's engine. After it's charged this battery, it will then take power to charge your leisure battery when the engine's running. Fabulous. I need a ignition source wire to go in as well. Yeah. I'm hoping one of these here will give me that when, yeah. when we um, get that one. And then you fed this. But I fed this. Look how neat this under is. Under the carpet. Comes through the back of the bulkhead. Comes through the back of the bulkhead. I'm not going to fasten it in, in yeah. case one of these will be my wire source for the ignition. So you'll also feed that through. And I'll feed that through yeah. here. But this will go basically like that and then sit in this conduit to protect it all the way up to the battery charger. Yeah. You can see how he's already laid out all the tie wrap supports to feed the wire through there so neatly because we are going to cover this with ply so it will all be hidden and out the way, won't it? Yeah, yeah. but it protects it because we don't want that being kicked or damaged yeah. or anything. So yeah. put, that's why I put conduit everywhere so we don't chafe any wires because that's quite powerful. That one, if that shorted out, would be a big flash and a bang before the circuit breaker trip. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah. Cool. So that one's that one's in, yeah. and I'm just about to connect up the final aux beam. I'm not sure which one it is, but there's one left to do. We've just fed those wires through. That's the pink wire that Becca so nicely suggested earlier. Yes. So we now have some pink wire, which makes me very happy. Yeah. Look at this. Let me show you where we're at. Look, we've now got pink as well as the red. Coming all the way down spaghetti here. Junction. Spaghetti Junction comes down. The pink one is the ox beam. So we mark all of them, label all of them. Because otherwise, how on earth are you supposed to know what is that? <laughs> it's a, just a danger zone. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. What people might start looking at and saying why is my background is aircraft engineering, yeah. wiring, and all its avionics, navigation, autopilots. And we split, in the aviation industry, we split every circuit to its own fuse or circuit breaker. And I'm going to do that in Becker's van, so she will have at least 12 fuses. Most vans 
even my motorhome has only got six fuses because they bump up the wires. So electrics, lighting will all be on one fuse. Well, here they won't. They'll have a fuse for kitchen, she'll have a fuse for bed, and she'll have a fuse for lights. So Love if anything it. ever trips, we only lose one circuit. So if there's a problem with lighting, she, she would only lose a third of the lights, not all of the lights. Oh, you're so good, Dad. Thank you. That's awesome. Love it. <laughs> the bit he said just as I stopped filming there was, means it's more work though. That's his lovely new crimping tool yeah, to new. join wires together. Oh, shall I back up? Let's so people can see what the work is. Come on then. Normally I would help here, but I'm filming, so <laughs> <laughs> it does look a bit. Did you, you, you need my help? Yeah, I'm okay. You're all right. I just need to find the black one. Okay. The yeah. <laughs> I told them all that it was boring watching us feed wires through, but that looks quite funny. <laughs> work yeah. if you all think I forgot to pull this one through this is my, my it's your feed wire feed isn't it, wire through to get it through, uh, conduit because the conduit is in half here for this fan to come and join in he managed to get them in there so, yeah so you fed a wire through didn't you for anybody that's doing this you fed a wire through and then every yeah. wire that you need to feed through I, After I, that, you I'd tape onto here, yeah, and then pull through. Yeah, fabulous. Um, because it's that's a good trick. Easier. That's what this one is. A guide um, wire. And this one as well. Yeah. yeah. So if just you're doing this yourself, wires. get one of the wires through, and then just tape all the others to it, and, and keep the looping them round. First time you feed one through, don't leave it bare like this. Fold it back, and tape it so that smooth edge doesn't get caught on every ripple. Ah, oh, there we go, let's okay. just zoom in on that. So That's you, would, it. you would tape that like that yeah. and then feed it through. There's one. That's what it looks like to feed them yeah. through. Yeah. yeah, just a little tip. Yeah, so the first few are easy, but once you've got a few in here, it gets busy, you're, doesn't it? You're it's... better off putting a guide one through and then uh, it just helps to get them easier to feed them through. Lovely. Right. This is the stuff that takes the time when you don't know what you're doing. So we've just wasted a good, wasted. We've just spent a good 20 minutes, half an hour, trying to work out how to fit these brackets to the van. So every video I've watched of YouTubers doing this, they add a piece of wood to this section and they drill these, bolt, these brackets to that. Now, we thought we didn't have to do that. We thought we could just attach these straight to there. However, we can't get behind this side to- Just this one. Just the end one here to fasten the nut on the end of the bolt, isn't it? Yeah. So these just won't be steady enough. So we've got to go pick up some wood to fit that so we can fit the brackets on. This is the stuff why it takes so long because we don't know what we're doing. Figuring it out as we go. Well, that's where we're at, so time to move. We've come back to Dad's house because, do you remember when we were going to rebuild the bulkhead instead of just cutting it out? So we have some two by one from that job that we'd started to shape and it just happens to be almost perfect to fit along that bit there. So here's me using the circular saw for the first time. Dad just taught me how to do that. Hey. We've cut off the end of them. I have had to pull out all the bottled insulation that went in this strut because we're now going to bolt the wooden two by one to it and then we'll just be able to screw in the brackets for the bed. Once we'd attached that wooden joist to the wall, which took over an hour, may I add? I added in those brackets and then decided to call it a day. It's a new day, hit my limit yesterday, let's say got too frustrated, just gave up. Um, the bed we were fitting here, when I was putting the brackets on, the last two, because they were at the edge of the pieces of wood, just split the pieces of wood. I should have drilled a pilot hole first, um, but I didn't. So 
so it's a new day we're back and i'm gonna do this side now so this is what one side of the bed looks like just missed the end screw there middle one in fine end one just missed the very end screw and the uh the wheel cover is back on so it was quite neat these are the bolts we're using. They were a bit longer, but dad has been a legend and cut them to size for us. So these are what is holding the wood to the van. Ooh. This is what they look like when they're in. He's uh, with the nuts and the bolts, and then he's also ground them off again so they don't stick out. One of the things we learnt yesterday was you can't put the bolts this way because you can't get your hand behind here to fasten all the nuts and bolts on. I'll show you some footage of us trying to do that now. That was quite funny. So what we ended up doing is going from the back, pull forward so we could fit these washers and nuts on properly. So if you're doing this yourself, tip. I did loads of research and saw people always put a piece of wood to attach the bed to from the way, from the bed that I'm doing. And I didn't know why, they never explained why. So we tried to do it directly into the metal. You can't do that because you can't get the bolts on the other side to attach the brackets. So this one here, let me show you on the other side. We need the bed, the end bed bracket to go here and you can't get behind this at all to tighten the bolts. So that's why you have to use a piece of wood. So my job this morning, I've got to cut this, pull out all the insulation so we can fix the wooden bat batten to it fix the wooden batten to it and just repeat the process on that side. And then you'll be able to see what the bed looks like. Whoop. This one was much easier because I knew what I was doing. So drill through the wood and the metal, add the bolts in from back to front and tighten them up. That ain't going anywhere, Dad. <laughs> I did that all by myself, I'm learning. I then just had to add three screws in for each of those brackets and that was a simple job done. For the purpose of authenticity, you're going to see this. So they're in. Wonderful, fabulous, marvellous. Works a treat. We put the mattress on. So although it sits on these perfectly, what we realised is we can actually push it towards the back door more to free up some space. So that means the mattress only comes to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to move these ones over and I'm going to use this screw to move that edge across so we can bring it in. Saves us, I don't know, two or three inches. And that space is vital in the van. So even though we measured it out perfectly and it all works, I'm gonna just move that one in a bit to get us a bit of extra space. All right, I've moved those. And it very, very easily slats on there. Uh, say hi to mum, she's there. Say hi to mum. And once I've hooked it in on the one side, then you just drag them. You just drag it, it extends and slots into the other no, side, that's it. And this is what it now looks like. The slats have arrived and Mama is just about to go pick those up for us, aren't you? I am. Yeah. But first, I have to undo some work because two of you lovely people spotted that I had not sound deadened the back of these doors at the bottom. So I had to take off all the work, pull off the insulation, add the sound deadening before putting it all back on and repeating the process on the other side. So thanks for catching that for me. And by the time I was done, mum had returned with the bed slats. For the purpose of this video, we added the bed slats in and just screwed a few crucial ones down to make sure they didn't go anywhere so we could add in the mattress and show you what it looked like. Ah. Ah. We did it! Woo! Let so me get on! I have a bed! Oh. Wow! Can I get up? <laughs> You're the wrong way though. I'm the wrong way? Well, yeah, my head's that way, isn't it? How wonderful.
How perfect is this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> coming together finally. <sighs> the building work has started. Look who's in. <gasps> Look who's in the van. She's having a sniff. This is the first time she's properly been in. Hey darling. Get used to the smells. This is our new house. The first sunny day and everybody's on the street is mowing their lawns so sorry about the noise hi sweetheart do you want to come up oh you're magnificent you're magnificent she's under the bed she's under the bed and i'm on a slant and i'm almost falling off i'm sliding off <gasps> yeah is this your <gasps> Oh my God, that's literally where her bed's going to go. You okay, darling? How'd you like it? <laughs> People were asking to see some more of you. This stage has got me so excited for van life. Reverse up somewhere, south facing, on a sunny day. Open the back doors. Look. I already feel free, even though I'm just parked on a drive. <laughs> oh, it's gonna start getting real exciting now, isn't it? Thanks for joining me on this adventure. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.